Welcome to the Clearing Your Probate Notes Workshop presented by the Orange County Superior Court Self-Help Center. Before we get started, we would like to clarify how we may assist you and provide you with information to make clearing your probate notes a smoother process. As the Self-Help Center, we cannot provide you with legal advice. We can only provide you with procedural guidance information. If you need legal advice, please reach out to an attorney for assistance. This workshop will help you learn what probate notes are, why you must clear them to move your case forward, and how to clear your probate notes. Probate cases require that you file multiple page documents, and it is important that you keep your documents organized, preferably in one file and in reverse chronological order, which means the oldest document should be at the very bottom and the most recent document will be on top. These documents are reviewed by the probate examiners to verify completion and that they meet the legal requirements necessary to move your case forward. The probate examiner's review is divided into multiple sections, providing an overview of the case, parties requests, and deficiencies. This review is viewable by going to the Orange County Court Public website at www occourts.org. Click the Online Services tab and then click on Probate Notes. The term Probate Notes refers to the Deficiency section, which is where you can locate the probate notes that need to be cleared. Deficiencies are the probate examiner's way of informing you what issues were identified in your documents that require further clarification. Be sure to review the notes thoroughly for any indication stated as to how the note may easily be cleared. Please understand that probate notes are a common and ongoing part of your case, and it is recommended to start checking your probate notes weekly, at least two to three weeks prior to your hearing. If you have submitted documentation to clear your notes, be sure to follow up and check which probate notes were cleared and which notes still remain. Documentation to clear your probate notes must be submitted at least five court days prior to your hearing. Calculating the five days can be harder than it seems. For example, your probate hearing is scheduled for Friday, January 16th, and you need to figure out by which date do your probate notes need to be cleared. January 15th would be day one, January 14th is day two, January 13th is day three, and January 12th is a court holiday, so we don't account for that as a court day. We also do not count Saturday and Sunday, as the court is closed on those days. Therefore, Friday, January 9th is day four, and January 8th is day five. The deadline to meet for clearing your probate notes is January 8th. However, if you don't meet this deadline, you still need to appear for your probate court hearing and the court will reschedule you for another day. Please keep in mind that this will delay your case. If the filing party has not cleared the probate notes by the third continuance, depending on the matter before the court, the petition may be dismissed without prejudice and the filing party will be required to start the process over, which means the filing party will be required to pay the filing fee again in order to refile all documents. In addition, an appointed personal representative may be ordered suspended with an order to show cause Ray removal hearing to be set. For decedent estate matters, five of the most common deficiencies are filing a notice of hearing, filing a verified supplement, amending a form already completed and filed, completing the DE-111 form correctly, and addressing bond. For decedent estate matters, a Notice of Petition to Administer Estate, Form DE-121, must be completed. This notice must be served on all necessary parties. Let's review some of the common errors on this notice. Starting with item number one, which is where the name of the decedent whom has passed away would be stated. Item number two refers to the name of petitioner, the person who is requesting the petition to administer estate. Section 6 is where the hearing information is listed, which I will explain in more detail. Currently, the probate department is conducting hearings remotely. Unless otherwise instructed, remote hearing instructions are required to be provided when giving notice. 
please be sure to attach the three steps for remote appearance instruction to your form DE-121 titled Notice of Petition to Administer Estate. I would also like to point out item number 10 on the form DE-121 Notice of Petition to Administer Estate does require completion. Item number 10 must state the name and address for the petitioner which is the person requesting the action. In decedent estate matters, service by mail is sufficient. Please be sure that you place the required documents, Form DE-121, copy of filed Form DE-111, remote hearing attachment, and any additional attachments necessary to that petition in the mail for service at least 15 calendar days prior to the court hearing. One of the most common questions you may find yourself asking is, which family members do I need to serve? Here is the decedent's tree, which illustrates the parties that must be served in decedent estate cases. For a decedent estate case, you must serve the following parties if they exist in your case. The executor administrator of a will or trust, persons named in a will, decedent spouse or registered domestic partner, the decedent's children and or grandchildren if applicable. Please note that the column on the right side of the screen, starting with parents, is only used when the decedent died without a spouse or registered domestic partner, or when the decedent had a spouse but no children. In those cases, you will go down this column until the decedent has one of the family members listed. For example, if a decedent was not survived by their parents or their own siblings, but was survived by their grandparents, then only the grandparents would be served. Similarly, if the decedent was survived by their parents and their siblings and their grandparents, then only their parents would be served. There is no need to serve anyone else because we must stop going down this column as soon as the decedent is survived by one of the persons listed. In decedent's estate matters, there are two main documents that need to be served, Form DE-111, Petition for Probate, and any attachments that are necessary, and also Form DE-121, the Notice of Petition to Administer Estate. The second most common probate note is the probate examiner's request for a verified supplement. What is a verified supplement? A verified supplement is your written response to a question in your probate notes under penalty of perjury. The probate examiner may ask you for more supportive documentation or clarification to a request in your initial petition. The verified supplement provides you an opportunity to provide your explanation to the probate examiners. There's two ways that you can submit this supplement, either by using the Orange County Local Form L dash 1332 response to probate notes or utilizing a blank pleading form. Please note at the end of your blank pleading form after you have provided your response, you must sign under penalty of perjury that your statements are true. Please remember when responding to probate notes in writing that you must respond in the order for which it is stated under your deficiency section. List the number of the note and a short title of the note. Your answers must be direct, specific, and simple, and be sure to date and sign each page of your response. When you're submitting your verified supplement, be sure not to respond to any notes asking for the filing of a new or amended documents. Do not respond with what you think is important, and do not use this opportunity to repeat your side of the story. I'd like to invite you to take a moment to review the example of probate note specifically requesting a verified supplement. This verified supplement was submitted on the local form response to probate notes. The third most common probate note is the probate examiner's request for you to file an amended document. What this means is there was either clarity required or information missing in your original document. Therefore, you must now complete the document in its entirety and resubmit it to the court. When you resubmit this document, be sure to write the word amended in the caption and sign and date your name. 
Here is a sample probate note specifically asked to the form DE111 titled Petition for Probate. This form contains nine numbered sections. Be sure to fill in each section as it pertains to your matter. Let's review this form together beginning with the caption. Please make sure to mark the correct boxes to match exactly what you are requesting in your petition. Please note, when requesting authorization to administer under the Independent Administration of Estates Act and you need limited authority only, that you mark this box. Section 2 pertains to the petitioner. Please be sure to complete all areas of this section as it applies to the petitioner. Section 3 has multiple areas which all need to be completed as it requires specific information regarding the decedent, including information regarding the decedent's estate, which also pertains to Section 4, Section 5, Section 6, and Section 7. Section 8 addresses the status of the decedent's survivors. Please be sure to review and mark this section as it applies to your matter and include all specific requested information under Section 8 to the best of your ability, including any deceased person mentioned in the decedent's will or codicil. Section 9 is to be marked only if there are additional attachments related to this form that are to be included for review. Lastly, within Section 9, please be sure to print and sign your document on the last page of your petition or on the last page of any attachments to your petition. Some important deadlines to remember regarding decedent's estate is as to the completion of service. Service needs to be completed on all required parties at least 15 calendar days prior to hearing. The filing of the proof of service needs to be completed at least five court days prior to the date of hearing. Failure to comply with these deadlines may result in a continuance which would delay your case. Upon approval of decedent estate matters, bond may be ordered by the court. The three most common bond orders made by the court are bond ordered for any specific amount, will waives bond as stated in the will, and bond waived pursuant to probate code 8481, which means that bond is waived in writing by all beneficiaries. Please be sure to address your request as to bond when filing your initial petition. The court understands that probate law can be very complicated, specifically the process of clearing your probate notes. We have developed a variety of resources to help you through this process beginning with checking your probate notes online. Please be sure to start checking your probate notes at least two to three weeks before your court hearing. You may also email the probate examiner with a specific question to get a response. There is the option of the Probate Notes text messaging program. This program will allow you to receive a text message whenever a probate note has been updated. We have the self-help center that is available to provide you guidance, information, and review your documents prior to you filing them with the court. Lastly, you have the option of visiting the Orange County Public Law Library which is staffed by librarians that went to law school and are experts at researching the law and procedures. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, the Orange County Superior Court Self-Help Center is here to help you.